Hello and welcome to the Chicken for Breakfast podcast, where we have all the answers to one very simple question. What is cooking? I'm your host, Magic. And today's guest is very special, a uh, very good friend of mine. Uh, we've been talking about doing this for a very long time. Griffin, Years at this point. That's so, that's yeah. so real. Uh, let's get into it, man. Uh, what's up? What's cooking? Well, I'm home for the summer from college, studying psychology, and I almost made it out with all A's this, or both semesters, except for biology. Got a B. But B for biology. Exactly, dude. Class averages on the exams were in the 50s. Dang. Yeah. Uh, what does a biology class look like these days? I've been thinking about this a lot, actually. How in biology classes, you're sitting in this like giant lecture hall, listening to some dude yapping with a slideshow. Like, eighth grade level, like, Google Slides type deal. And I really think people would be so much more engaged in smaller like class settings and like walking through the woods and like picking out flowers and like, you know, this is the anther, this is this, this is how it all works, rather than looking at the pictures. Like maybe look at the pictures after, mm. but you know, everybody's nod, nodding off listening to some dude just yapping in a like dimly lit room. Well, I feel like that's like the, the embodiment of college. It's just listening to someone who may or may not be qualified talking about things that I may or may not care about. So that's why I was like, ah, maybe I won't do college. Maybe I won't do that. I think at this point, if you really know what you want to do, college is a great option. But just getting a certification in anything puts you a, a step above a lot of people. And I think that's, that opens up the opportunity for people to get into a lot of niche uh, fields, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it's interesting. Last time, because I, I always love coming down and visiting, you know, friends at college, and I came down um, and visited you. And I think one of the things I said there was like, sometimes I wonder, sh- did I miss out on the college experience? Right? Because I, I feel like some people, right? Like you can go to college to learn the exact same thing that I do, and you might get like a higher, like a slightly higher degree or like a slightly higher something or another to say that you went to college. But all too often, I think I hear, I only went to college for the experience. Well, I will say you can get tired for free and you don't have to drop 30,000 <laughs> grand to do that. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. I, don't, I didn't have like a college experience. I just worked and did school, worked, did school, slept, and that's it. Yeah, so one thing that we talked about though, because um, again, we've been talking about doing a podcast for yeah. a while. Um, we were down in Athens, Ohio, and we were like, we should shoot a podcast. And one of the main topics that came up was, it was an unofficial podcast, like, it, yeah, it was fun. But um, one of the things that we talked about was psychology and why you wanted to do psychology. So you should, you should, you should explain that. Well, I can't remember what I told you in that moment, but somebody had asked me while I was down in school, And I had told him it was because I couldn't hold a flashlight very well growing up. So I knew I wasn't going to be a tradesman. Mm. (laughs) So I had to to go to school. And I just like having conversations with people. And in the field of psychology, you can have some really, like, I don't know. There's just a feeling of walking away from a great conversation. Even if it's not, like, constructive or you're, like, helping somebody out. Just, like, a good conversation. You feel different when you walk away. Absolutely. The, uh, the human mind is interesting, right? It is, but sometimes you end up learning things that you kind of wish you didn't know. But other than that, it's a pretty, pretty cool field, and it's a lot easier than, it's, than people make it out to be. I mean, once you've sat through one psych class, you've sat through, like, three. <laughs> yeah. I know there's a few different, like, levels to, to psychology. What part about it um, intrigues you the most? I'm really interested in entheogenics, which is um, plant substance, substances that induce altered states of consciousness and using them in a clinical setting. And we're already seeing this and have been for the past couple of years with substances like MDMA or ketamine. And I'm really interested in the application of psilocybin because it has 
a lot of like neurogenitive properties, which decades ago we didn't even think was a thing. We thought, you know, if you hit your head a bunch and like killed off a bunch of your neurons, they're not coming back. Apparently that's not true. You well, just got to have a little vitamin. Well, then there's hope. <laughs> there's actually um, this scientist that I'm really interested in. His name is Paul Stamets. And he does a lot of mycology, which is the science of mushrooms. And he's proposed uh, what he calls a stamen stack. And it's lion's mane, psilocybin, niacin, or uh, some sort of other acid. And he's, he's used concepts from Eastern medicine, which is a lot of um, mycology-based medicines, and uh, using the neuro generative properties to help with things like neuropathy and I, I i just think it's cool yeah i was gonna say like this is a lot of this is a lot of big words but it's cool uh but to like anyone who's just listening they're like why is this dude coming on just talking about drugs so that's where we're at right that's, now uh, yeah that's the crazy part about being interested in that is because like there is a science behind it but then when i'm like this you know 20 year old kid sitting in school and they're like so what do you want to do with your degree I'm like, well, I really like drugs. <laughs> uh, it it kind of seems like you don't. Really, <laughs> it kind of seems like you don't really necessarily like drugs, but you no. like studying how these. But things, it's like, yeah, 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 it's yeah. hard to talk about that because that's all people hear. Yeah, and but that, it's not. Again, it's not even like the biggest focus for yeah. me. Well, that's that's just how the world is. You know, you can you can go into any any video on the internet. And you can find hate comments along other side comments. Like, someone's always going to have a problem with what you say. So just be you, man. Speaking of bot comments, by the bot way. Bot comments. Great segue, by Thank the you. way. Thank you. So, have you heard of dead internet theory? Dead internet theory. Dead internet theory. Dead. Dead internet dead. theory? Yeah, no, it's I've dead. Not. The internet is dead? Yeah. Oh. So, basically, there's... There's all these bot comments that like flood comment sections to the point where it's proposed that they're they make up the bulk of it and there aren't like real people commenting on things mm. or or it's just hard to sort them out and the idea is eventually everything is just gonna be generated and there's gonna be less and less like human content i don't I don't think it'll get that far, but it is kind of funny seeing all the bot comments on Instagram because you see like like a kid fail, like a kid falls down a slide or something and the bot comments are always like, this is unsafe. You should not have let your kid go down a slide. He could get a concussion. And there's like 80 of them. And then there's always somebody, and I don't know, I don't know if it's like bot comments feeding off of bot comments or other people reacting to them, but there's always somebody that's like, wow, everybody's so upset in these comments about their, their parenting skills. Mm. That's interesting because I see this. I see this kind of stuff all the time. I think, right. I, I think everyone in the room is like, "Oh, yeah, this this checks out." Uh, but I don't necessarily, you know, is it a? It's a theory, right? Yeah, but I, I mean, mean they I think a lot of people everything. get offended though. I think a lot of people, right? Like I just saw a video of like this morning. I saw a video of a, a girl, and she was with her sister, and her sister wanted the crayon, so she was like, "You know." When you ask for something, this is how you do it. You say, can I please have this? Can I please have this? <laughs> <laughs> so she, she was like, you, you, you say, can I please have this? And then the other sister starts kind of going through it and, you know, repeating like, oh, this is how you do it. And then when she finally gets it down, she goes, no. And everyone's like, why would you do that? And it's like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. There were a lot of bot comments. But like, are you saying AI generation? Yeah. Like the usernames and everything? Oh, yeah. And mm. and it's it's pretty easy to figure out which ones are and which ones aren't. But I feel like that statement is not going to hold true for very long. Yeah. I mean, I also think, like, along those same lines, do you think that AI uses real people to generate more AI? So, actually... Right, like, do you think my profile would ever be used as a comment? Even though it's not me, it could, and people have been doing that even before these AI bots. People were just like stealing stuff, but actually, Meta is doing this thing where they are using like data scraping AI 
to uh, you like feed people's art that they post into AI, and they're like feeding people's faces, likeness, everything. They're just feeding it into into the AI. That's really scary. It is really scary. But what are we gonna do about it? <laughs> you know that's a fun thought and also a scary thought but also it's, a real thought on a, on a lighter note with all this content being like fed into these ai they start feeding into each other and they take ai generated art which has all these like mistakes because it's like it's not all perfect and like you know there's a like free uh cert or free stuff online and then there's like the premium ones and so they're taking the low quality ones and feeding it into it, just like mm. scraping it in. And so it's like self-destructing and it starts like feeding off of the mistakes it had made before. Mm. So then we just get even more wacky art. But it's so funny to see that the, uh, the older ones among us on Facebook have not picked up on that yet. And they yeah. absolutely love it. <laughs> What's going on, y'all? I'm Magic from the Chicken for Breakfast podcast, and we're heading into season five of the podcast on our brand new set brought to you by Studio Zero and iFilm216. As you know, we're going to have our fan favorites coming back for podcast after podcast, but sometimes this chair is going to be empty, and we need you to sit down and have a conversation. If that interests you, you'll see a button down below that says learn more. That'll just send us a message letting us know that you are interested, and we'll get you on. Let us know. And we'll see you soon. You said that you wanted to talk about uh, scouts. Scouts. Yeah, it was because I, I'm, I'm going fishing all the time, and I'm looking for fishing buddies, and Carl's not really into it. Like, nobody, nobody else is really into it. And then you and I have talked about it, and then I just forget that we talked about it. I'm like, oh, Johnny's, Johnny's not going to be into it. He's not going to. He's not going to want to do this. And then we talk about scouts, and you're like, yeah, I'd love to go fishing with you. Oh, well, we need to make that happen. And we said that, like, the past three years. Yeah, man, I love fishing. <laughs> I love fishing. Um, a lot of people don't like fishing because of the amount of patience that it takes. Uh, but, like, on the same token, imagine sitting on your phone for three hours, and then imagine fishing for three hours. You'll probably accomplish the same thing, but with fishing you have a way greater chance of success of actually doing something. Or you could max and do both at the same time. Well, there's that. And too. go catfishing. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Um, it's funny that you bring that up, um, scouts and stuff. We actually just did an episode with, uh, with David where uh, I was talking about um, scouts and kind of where I come from on there. But there was one year at scout camp, we did fishing merit badge. Well, I did fishing merit badge. Um, every year you get to pick, you know, you get to pick your classes and stuff. So I picked fishing merit badge, and I was the only scout that year to catch a fish. Just because, like, it was a lake that was so overfished. Oh, yeah. It was, yeah. So, like, week after week, summer after summer, people are going and fishing. And the story is, it, it's, it's kind of fun. Uh, I'll spare it. But um, l short story long, long story short, uh, I was fishing on this side of the lake, then I walked over to the other side across a land bridge. So it's like this tiny little pond. And I throw my, my pole in the water. Like I'm, I'm there fishing for like an hour. And then the alarm, the, the music goes off, which means it's time to head back to camp and get ready for you know dinner at the dining hall. And so I'm literally reeling in. It's literally time to leave. And I'm reeling in. And then I feel this giant tug. And I was like, whoa. And I just yank up. Like I'm scared. I'm like, oh. <laughs> and I set the hook. And then I, I catch this fish and I'm like, oh! I'm like freaking out, dude. So what was it? It was a it was a tiny little um. Bat. <laughs> he goes this big this big scared me a little. And he goes, yeah, it was just a tiny. It, no, little. it was it was, yeah, it was a tiny bass. It was a tiny bass, but um, you know, the the idea of the merit badge was just catch a fish, cook it, and eat it. And since you're at scout camp, it doesn't matter what time of the year it is. I don't know if I'm incriminating myself right now, <laughs> but uh, I cooked that John up, and it was good. It tastes really good. And I was the only scout that year to, to get the merit badge. But it's always been one of my core memories of just, like, time to go. I would love to take you fishing. I just always feel bad when I take somebody and then we don't catch something. No. But there's people that make a living, like, just taking people out on the waters they know and, like, being a fishing guy and, like, running charters. People do that on, on the lake. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's nothing 
like it, you, you can't go fishing with the expectation of catching anything which just makes it even better when you do 100 percent. see i'm right here we gotta go i'm right here we're, all, we're always on the same wavelength that is so true when you and i it's a long hair gang it's it's an extension of our nervous system <laughs> but you and i always have deep conversations just out of nowhere and I've always thought of you as like my philosophy friend that I can talk like big cosmic questions with. And I think it was it was right after my grad party had showed up late because you, you were just you're always so busy, which I just paid off. Yeah. But uh, we sat on the dock the following morning and just talked theology for like two hours. It was crazy, man. It was crazy. And this just like just happened. It was so fun. Um, yeah, so we're always on the same wavelength because uh, I think I think our brains kind of work the same way. I think they just always have. There's um, a term for it. What is it called? Autism. Mr. Psychology major. What would you say? Autism. Oh my god. <laughs> 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 uh, okay. <laughs> uh, but no, we're we are always on the same wavelength, which is another cool segue into our music is also pretty. Oh my pretty, god. Pretty evenly. Um, tacked up, which means um, I was thinking about this on the way over. You are one of the only friends that I have who um, doesn't isn't super picky about music. Um, for example, I'll shout him out. He's not gonna care, and if he does, <laughs> he'll fight me at home. Uh, but Carl, like, he listens to a lot of rap, which is cool. Uh, he doesn't listen to a lot of other stuff, but I've seen his music taste change. Right? He's into metal. He's into a lot of different kinds of music. He likes seventies rock and roll. That is true, uh, but like you and I, we can, we've got a we've got a nice taste of like lo-fi, you know, gentle gentle stuff. Uh, Jordan gets stuck listening to a lot of my music too, <laughs> um, but I listen to all types of music. I listen to so I get many that. different kinds. I think it's it's important for people to have a, an eclectic music taste, and it boggles my mind when people tell me they don't like music or they don't listen to music. And that's that way with a lot of things where people say they don't like something. But it's like you just haven't found the one for you. And maybe. You, just, you just haven't found music that you like. Well, uh, and maybe even on a deeper level, we, we had a guy on here one time recently um, from a, an art gallery, um, Dave from Deep Roots. And he was just saying, like, a lot of people don't understand art. They don't know how to appreciate the art form, right? Like, you don't buy a painting just to buy a painting. You buy a painting to support people, but you also buy a painting because of how it makes you feel. So I think people who don't appreciate music, you know, maybe they just don't know how to feel. Maybe they feel they don't have time to feel. One of my coworkers put it very well. She's She's been doing songwriting for years, and she had said, there's something, I, I'm going to butcher the quote, but it was something like, when you find a song and it hits you, and the first thing to come to your mind is, this is me. And my, my brother dogged on me so much for listening to country growing up, but here he is, one of the biggest Zach Bryan fans I know, <laughs> because he, he had that moment where a song hit him and he was listening to it, and he says, this is me. That's so Johnny. <laughs> that's, that's so me. That's, that's so Johnny. So me. That's so me. I love the inside jokes. Um, but yeah, we, we, um, we, we, we relate so much in music that we created our own Spotify blend just so we can follow it's each other on goading. music. It's, it's a bang. Uh, and the best part about it is it changes every week. So we're kind of like, you know, it's, it's our way of keeping up with each other, even if we don't always have the ability to, to keep up. I love that it puts our like profile pictures next to which song it was contributed from yeah. us. So then it's like seeing like, ooh, when did Johnny find out about this one? Yeah. Or I'll see you've been listening to one and I, I don't have it. I'm like, ooh, I've never heard that one before. Yeah, it's a nice little surprise, right? Like sometimes I'll forget that that playlist is on and I'll be like, it's a really good song. It's on the blend. I love that. I love how Gen Z treats music because Gen Z is very interested in aesthetic and vibe. And when we get together, when we're picking music, we go, what's the vibe? And it could be anything. We could be like, 
you know, pepped up, or we could just be chilling. Yeah. It takes me back. I, you saying that unlocked a memory of, like, vacation last year. Oh, my gosh. When we, there were, like, eight of us, and we were all just sitting around. We had a speaker, and we would just sit there, and we would listen to music, and then we would, we would start a jam. So then yeah. everyone would contribute just one song, and it would just go around, and we would listen to music, and that inspired so many conversations. It inspired so many things, and it was just... Like there was there was one song and they were all like, Ooh, ooh, ooh. That this is, is good. the most satisfying thing, that approval where somebody's like, yeah. wait a minute. Yeah. These cats are cooking. hundred <laughs> percent. Like what when you when you contribute a song to the thing and everyone's like, Oh like it's it's really something special to be like, Oh, I I presented this thing to you that's going to be a piece of you at least short term. Yeah. You know? And I think that's the magic of music. And then attach it like when you when you get really into music and you're in music for a long time you start associating memories like that with those songs, and then it just makes them hit harder. 100%. I'm not, I'm not huge into Kendrick, but there's a song, uh, what was it, Hillbillies? Oh, I know exactly what memory you know. I have Dude. a good memory of Hillbillies. <laughs> it's such a good song. It just, I don't really care for the whole song, but the intro just brings me back. Real. But I love, I love conversational music. Where you're listening to music with somebody, you're like showing them a song. It's not like a lot going on, and you're like, okay, this is nice. And then you start a conversation, you get going, you get going, and then the conversation kind of dies out, and then you start you you start fading back into the music. You're like, wait a minute, all right, and then you start talking about the music again. You're like, oh yeah, this is good. Yeah, I know it's good. And then you you start talking about something else. Conversation dies down, and it just gets better every time you like. Yeah. Go back to it. I yeah, love music like that. Have you ever wondered what it's like to work on the set of a movie or TV show? Do you want to know what goes on behind the scenes of producing a feature film or a commercial? Students in the iFilm program make tons of content, including a short film, music video, promos, and a feature film. No other program develops as much content as iFilm. From screenwriting to set design, working with actors and directors, as well as post-production, you'll learn what it takes to build a career in the film industry. And we're currently accepting new students. Sign up at iFilm216.com so you don't have to wonder anymore. We'll see you there. Let's, let's talk about how we first met, because it's like, it's the most interesting, fascinating story. Uh, in, in my eyes. You could so, not wrap your head around how old I was for like three years. Dude, yeah, for three years I was like, <laughs> it's so funny. So for three years I was like, oh, you're like, I, I knew you weren't my age, but I thought you were only one year younger than me. So I'd always be like, Griffin, are you ready to graduate? And he'd be like, nah, bro, I still got like two Dude, years. Yeah. I'd be like, huh? <laughs> what? Uh, and it's like, you're super mature for your age, which again, I think that's why we kind of relate so much. Well, I'm big too, so I, I fit in. I look like you guys. Yeah, that is true. You look like Jesus Christ. <laughs> My son. <laughs> yeah. Um, we met when I was in sixth grade and I, at the time, was really, really into Jack Jacksepticeye. And I had the little like golf hat and I got like puppy paint from Walmart in a black t-shirt and I made a septic eye Sam shirt with it and wore it for Halloween. I think it, I, it was the end of sixth grade. I even like dyed the top of my hair green, but it was some like school, like, like, like one of those like fun weeks where it's like you dress up on different days. Yeah. And it was you and like the other people from that table. That was a very interesting group back in the day. It was it's an interesting group. It was kind of cool to see how how it evolved and where everybody went. Some good, some bad. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say that. Yeah, yeah. It's like it's interesting to say the least. And we'll put it there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the most group ever. <laughs> but um, <laughs> yes, uh, but yeah. So we met because you were literally walking with your lunch tray. You were literally just walking by us, and we were like, "I do that from time to time." Like, yeah, yeah, relatable. Uh, that moment when, uh, <laughs> no, so you were walking by us with a tray and they're like, oh, nice hat. And then like, you just, we just, Hey bro, come sit down. And then we started talking about Skyrim. Oh my gosh. The Skyrim days. 
or so gas. Uh, and I won't ask you the question because of the podcast uh, setting, but our joke is so good. Uh, so we were talking about Skyrim, and uh, essentially there's a part in the storyline where you meet like a, a dragon, and he's a nice dragon, he's a cool dragon, he's a super mm-hmm. powerful dragon. And I was like, did you kill the dragon? I killed the dragon. Yeah, he killed the dragon. And it's just, for those who don't know what we're talking about, it, it it's just jargon. But, Parson X. Uh, <laughs> Parson X. Parson yes. X. Um, Parson X. <laughs> but that's like, that's like our first, like our first like conversation was that. And so we've just had inside jokes since. Yeah, I saw it on Instagram. Was it funny? <laughs> no. <laughs> this is an episode full of like things that people don't understand. It's so funny. But I love bit humor. Oh my gosh, do I love bit humor. The best comedy movies are bit humor. When there's just one slight little little slice of irony or like just something random that like you we have a connection to and that just makes it funny because nobody else does. But then the more people get in on it, it's still good. Yeah. Until until the Facebook moms get to it, then it gets kind of dicey. Yeah, well, <laughs> I feel like we've always kind of had those those moments though. Where it's like if we're in a group setting and then something happens, you're one of the first people that like we look over at each other. And we're like, yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. We'll just be like, yo, <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyways, uh, but yeah, we 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 definitely connect and we have uh, for a long time. So. We wanted to do a podcast together, and uh, I think it's going pretty well. Oh my gosh, it's been so much fun. So good to have you, man. It's awesome being here and just seeing how far you've come, because I you know, was there when it started. 100%. And we got a whole studio now. That's crazy. Yeah. And the um, neon light sign. Neon light sign. Yeah, this is, this is, this is like a, a really good piece with a really solid reflection on that main camera. Now that <laughs> But uh, we ball. Uh, yeah, but I will say, um, you know, nothing that we do. I'm going to take a moment to shout out Studio Zero. Uh, I'm wearing the shirt. Um, it's, it's all about the studio, um, the people that I've met, the network that we've created, and just being in a, a safe space where I can be me. I can, I can make the things that I want to make. Um, I can work with people who, who are like-minded. Um, and huge shout out to the team, you know, right now we got David and Jordan, <laughs> Owen was here earlier, right? It's, it's, it's always a good time, um, to, to be able to come in and, you know, this is actually really fun to me. It is. And I'm so happy for you. You've always been really good at, at talking to people and uh, improv and networking, but for you to have a space where like, it doesn't feel like networking, it's just making friends and like working on cool projects together. You're living it, man, and I'm I'm so happy for you. Yeah, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. We got a we got a good team. We got a, a good studio. Like, I'm where I need to be, and it's 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 fun to recognize that. And it's cool that you know a, a third party. I guess not really a third party, but like a biased second party, whatever it would be. Right? It would still be third party. Anyways, it's fun to see that someone who is close to me has also kind of witnessed that happening. Um, because when you have a good that's, that's what everything comes down to, right? It's, it's having a nice support system to be able to be, like, grounding you, if that makes sense. It's like you don't do it for the pats on the back, but when you get those pats on the back, who is it nice? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> um, and uh, I think you and, you know, these guys, too, you all know what it's like for me to not care necessarily about, like, what everyone else is doing in terms of, like, I started this thing a while ago, and I'm not stopping it. No. It's got to keep going. Better not. Yeah. <laughs> I'll hold you up to it. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's a fun time. Um, it's always a fun time. Carly Rae Jepsen. Uh, Jepsen? Jepsen. <laughs> I was hoping you wouldn't say anything. Uh, but yeah, man, I, I appreciate you being here. Uh, any last Any last thoughts that you want to you throw in? Well, I think, I think the universe or... God or whoever anybody listening listen or worships there there are opportunities that are presented to you when you put that energy out there when you work for something and things have a have a way of falling into place and putting you where you need to be when you need to be there and as long as you listen to that and stay true to yourself things will always work out 
And it's been so beautiful watching that happen with you. And I can't wait to see where you go. Absolutely. Well, I appreciate that. And I've definitely seen you overcome a few different things. And I think one of the big ones, am I allowed to talk about it? Of course. Um, I think one of the big ones for, for me is, is watching you overcome Lyme disease. It's, because yeah. like I, I knew you at a time where like I knew you before that. And then I knew you during that. You're gonna be so mad at me for bringing this up. Don't say the water bottle. The water bottle. The water bottle. Dude. Yeah. This guy. Okay, so it was this thing like at the lunch tables. You take like a a milk carton or a water bottle, and it was like the the milk carton of truth, the water bottle of truth. And you're like, you know, if I land this, this is gonna happen. That was on the bottle flipping era. Yeah. Johnny looks at me and he goes, if I make this, Griffin's gonna die. He flips it, lands it. He's like, I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking. And then like COVID happens, we get quarantined, and then I almost died. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like what a what a jerk, dude. What a jerk. And it was all like it was a joke. It was all out. No, I thought it was hilarious. Yeah, it was funny. That's our humor. But um I remember beans. Don't even get me started, bro. That's a bit humor. That's a bit it humor. It is bit humor. Uh, but I still have to say, like, I've seen you in I don't want to say that was your worst per se. But I've seen you at a moment where, you know, you're always pushing through, right? Like, how, how is it, how does it work to overcome that? How did, how did you get through that mentally? I think there's a lot of wisdom that comes from suffering. And honestly, that, that wisdom that you gain through suffering helps you appreciate what you have and really puts things into perspective that use it or lose it. And it's, it's said all the time and it's, it's the same with mental health. And we see this a lot in that world where you have to hit a rock bottom, be it like rock bottom or just like a personal one before you start going up. But then once you're there and you have that like click of, I can only go up from here and you do what you can to make that happen. And like I was saying, things fall into place. And I've met some really cool people that have helped me on that journey. And my friends, you guys back home while I was, you know, in hospitals back and forth, you guys made such a huge difference. And even afterwards when I was like better, but I was still like, I was really skinny and like, I didn't have any strength. Y'all coming down to the basement of my place and like lifting with me. Those, those are memories I'll never forget. And I, it wouldn't have been as big of an accomplishment if I had never suffered in the first place. Absolutely. I went, I, when I was super skinny back in high school, when you'd known me during that, I was like 127 pounds. I moved home from college this year at 205. Nice. Nice. Yeah. I know, I know for you, that's, that's, that's really good, man. huge. Yeah. Look at, look at you, by the way. You look good, man. Thank you. You look really good. You, you've actually inspired me to, I, I was talking for the longest time. I was like, I need to go to the gym. <laughs> I need to go to the gym. And I, I didn't go, but you've inspired me to, to keep moving. It's that. when, when I was really sick or just like, when, when you're dealing with anything mentally, people are always like, well, you should exercise. It make you feel better. And then you're like, I don't want to exercise. <laughs> and they're like, but the endorphins, the endorphins. I don't know who these endorphin guys are, but I don't really like care. <laughs> <laughs> but once you like get into it and you get a routine, the first like two weeks is kind of rough. But once you get past those two weeks and you get a habit going, like a routine, you do actually feel better. Not just like you're in a good mood, but you feel like you have energy. And it's, it's exciting when you have other people you're lifting with that keep you uh, accountable. And it's just fun for them to see your progress, especially like, cause it's so fun hyping each other up in the gym. Yeah. Come on, Come on. do more. You got two more. One more, one more, one more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's really, it kind of goes into that psychology that we were talking about at the beginning, but like, it's more than just the action that you're doing. It's the, the networking, it's the communication that you, those bonds that you're building with other people. There was it's, a, a, it's a healthy thing. There was a lot more networking involved in college than what I thought there would be. Yeah. But it's, actually really cool and I'm glad it, it works that way because there's one of my professors that I had this year and I'll be 
hopefully working very closely with him for the next several years as I'm working towards my doctorate. Because he does essentially what I'm trying to do. He has a private business as a clinical psychologist. And, you know, they're, they're telling you, you got to get to know your professors. You got to make these bonds because so that's how you get into like labs and practicums, readings. That's how you get internships. But he's such a cool dude <laughs> that it's so fun just getting to know him and talking to him about my interests. And he's like, he knows. He knows exactly what I'm talking about and we can go back and forth on this. It's like, while I love talking about these things with like family and friends, it's different when you talk to people that you know, like, you know, you can tell me about your studio stuff and the projects you're working on. And I think it's really cool. But when you get into like the technicalities and the small details that you appreciate, I'm not going to get it. But the friends that you've made in doing this, they get that. And it just makes that like networking so much more fun. 100%. You just got to love what you're doing. That's a really, that's really true, man. A lot of times in healthcare, we find people stay for the money and it turns them bitter. But then you also meet people that really love what they're doing and feel fulfilled. And they, in healthcare, they get through some pretty rough things, but it, it's beautiful to see that they still have like that, that energy. 100%. Well, we're going to wrap up this episode, but before we do, uh, first of all, thanks for coming. Thanks for having me. I'm uh, I'm obviously already invested in you and your future. Uh, it's mutual. It's gonna be a it's gonna be a thing where um, we're definitely gonna have you back on regularly. I'd like to I'd like to have you on. Oh my gosh! Uh, just because you're you've always got some like this this podcast went from being super lighthearted <laughs> and funny to being super like. But that's always how it goes with us. Every time. Every, every time. time. So um, I think this was a really fun time. I really appreciate you for being here. Where can we find you, follow you, whatever, if, if you if you want to shout that out? I don't post a lot, so I'm probably not going to shout myself out. However, in the future, I might do like a TikTok shout out when I start trying to do some like music. I'm going to try and do some production this year. So Absolutely. eventually in the future, I'll keep you keep you posted. Well, that's going to wrap it up for today's episode of Chicken for Breakfast. Griffin. Thank you so much for being here. Appreciate you. Of course. I loved being here. We loved having you. And uh, remember, chicken is a soul food. And breakfast is the most important meal of the day. So why not start your day out right with chicken for breakfast? And see. <laughs>